The Ministry of Fisheries terminates New Zealand's biggest ever power bust in Operation Paid. Hey, catch up with you, mother Not the Power poaching's a never-ending nationwide battle for Ministry of Fisheries officers, and Wellington's one of the places where the fisheries been badly hit by the activities of organised criminal groups, stripping the shoreline of the black gold. Stop! Stop! Hey! Stop! 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 What are you doing? Stop! You touch that again, you'll be under arrest. Stop there, fellas. You're under arrest. The trade in black market power is worth tens of millions of dollars every year. And it's estimated that more than half the power caught in New Zealand waters is caught illegally, damaging the economy and threatening the fishery. Well, that's a big one. In 2002, the Ministry of Fisheries tried to clean up the illegal power trade when they executed Operation Pac-Man. Our estimate of the illegal take was about 300 tonnes of power from the Wellington Wairapa area. Just three years later, Operation Keeper showed that the lucrative underground activity had mushroomed again. We're going to get him. Copy. <coughs> Would you like to open the front door? We can come in through this window. Operation Keeper has given rise to the largest bust ever undertaken by fisheries and the subject of tonight's Coast Watch special, Operation Paid, which used an undercover special duties fishery officer, an SDFO, to infiltrate and gather evidence on the poaching ring. You'll see very clearly from this operation, and you know from the past operation, Pac-Man particularly, that it's an organised criminal enterprise motivated entirely by greed. It's destroying an iconic customary fishery, and it's depriving the commercial industry of millions in domestic and export earnings. If it's allowed to continue, then there won't be a fishery to destroy in not too many years' time. Teams of fishery and police officers are preparing for the first potentially dangerous raids, and Brendan's team's going after two divers who have been supplying the power poaching ring. This is New Zealand's biggest ever power bust. Mate, I'm from Ministry of Fisheries. We've got the New Zealand police here as well. Come, get up. The man's a gang associate and is not responding well to his early morning wake-up call. What's, what's, what's all the... We do need, we're going to tell you what it's all about. Right. We need to I just to want to know why are you here? Yeah, it's all on the, no, it's all on the authority to enter, right? What, what's going to basically happen is you're going, you're going to come to it with us down to the police station for a formal interview. That's, I'm yeah. going down to the cop shop. You can talk to me in there. No, you are. Why? Why? Well, you're going to have... Oh, look, hey, I don't want to get into the nitty gritties of it, but yeah, that, that's how it's going to happen. Okay, what we're going to interview you about is basically uh, power offences. So. I can't even swim. Even with the presence of a large number of fishery officers and police, getting the two offenders out of the house is proving difficult. The anger isn't unexpected. These guys are alleged to be making thousands of dollars a week from black market power, and it's about to disappear. And diving equipment and vehicles used in the illegal trade are also going to go. And as you can see, we've found um, vehicles of interest. Certainly the white vehicle will be uh, seizing that. Also, there's another ready coloured vehicle up the front that's been involved in the alleged purchase and sale of uh, power as well, so anything, any vehicle that anybody's used in that regard will be seized today. With the vehicles and equipment on their way to the fisheries depot, police take the suspects away. Both persons of interest have been located, they've been now taken to the local police station to be uh, formally interviewed, so far so good. There was no power or dive equipment found at the address, but fishery officers located items which, when coupled with the SDFO's testimony, will put this link in the power chain out of action. Well, UHF looking, um, UHF radios, well, I guess um, tools, of the, tool to the, uh, tools of the power trade. Both the divers were convicted on charges of illegally trading in power. One received a sentence of 10 months home detention and 200 hours community work. The other was sentenced to 250 hours community work. The sun has still to rise on day one of the Ministry of Fisheries operation paid. But this massive bust's already started to have an impact on a critical link in the illegal power chain. The response to the early morning call is a mix of bewilderment and denial. G'day there. Oh my goodness, I am in a bloody morning. You should we believe you'll be involved in uh, some illegal fishing activity? Oh, mate, I haven't been involved in anything. Yeah, well, we've got good information that suggests you have been. Um, you've got a search warrant? 
Yep. Well, it's not a search warrant, but it's oh. we have authority to enter. There's a copy here for you. As Murray suspected, the alleged offender already knows about yeah, Operation yeah. Paid. The criminal grapevine has been busy since the first raids in the early hours of the morning. Mate, you going to find none of that here, mate? Well, we'll have a look anyway. And, uh... The situation quickly deteriorates into verbal abuse and a general unwillingness to cooperate. No, well, if there's nothing here, it's not going to take us long. Um, Sorry, dear. But this man's not making life easy for himself. Murray calls in police to move him to a more controlled environment. What we've decided to do is we'll get our target back to the uh, Kilburnie police station as uh, soon as possible. Uh, he's obviously not happy, so uh, we'll get him down there and um, complete the interview with him and uh, go from there. The officers couldn't find any documentation or other evidence at the address, but further investigations led to a conviction on charges of selling illegal power. The diver was sentenced to four months home detention and was banned from fishing for three years. And by the end of its first day, Operation Paid had dealt a severe blow to the supply chain of the power poaching ring. The second day of Operation Paid is now underway and fishery officers are about to visit the house of a woman who's bought 60 kilograms of power from the undercover special duties officer. Although it takes a while to raise them, the occupants of the house are at home. But as is often the case, getting in isn't that easy. I'm from uh, Fisheries. Just wait there, please. Just wait there. I've got a um, power dog who's going to come through the address. So just, yeah, just have a look through and just check for any evidence of any power. Uh -huh. Have you got any power dog? Uh -huh. You don't know? No, I don't. The man may not know if he has any power in the house, but a dog specially trained to pick up the unmistakable scent will certainly be able to tell. There's no uh, animals inside. Checking the freezer. Good boy, he's given a positive indication on the freezer. OK. As the clearly unhappy woman looks on, the search turns up its first bag of power. So that's all the power you've got here? Yeah. OK, that's good. Thank you. Just the one, um, as I understand, one bag of power in the freezer behind us and um, a little indication on the freezer over here as well from the dog. Good boy. The dog's nose doesn't lie, but the fishery inspector thinks the suspects might. Now, there's no other power here. Okay. Do, you, do you sell power in the shop? No. With only a small amount of power found in the house, officers decide to split the search team between the home and the couple's restaurant. But down at the restaurant, it's quickly apparent that nobody here is going to admit to anything. We'll put the dogs through here. Is there any power here? No, I want the power here. No power here? OK, that's fine. Yeah. When the special duties um, officer was here making the sales through the back door here, he uh, identified some things like the uh, chilli bin there. So it's just looking for the, um, those things that he's identified, some scales uh, that were, were here. And if we can locate those, that obviously adds to you know, what he was able to tell us at the time. Denial of holding or receiving illegal power is a common theme throughout Operation Paid. But locating the scales mentioned in the undercover officer's report gives fisheries more evidence to press for a conviction. A bit of a rabbit warren, but so we've done the back room. We'll check that out. So we're just coming through the restaurant now. When her case came to court, the woman was found guilty of trading in illegal power and was sentenced to three months community detention, 50 hours of community work, and her vehicles were forfeited to the Crown. In Auckland, Fishery Officer Marcy and a team of fellow officers have gathered in the central city to conduct another authority to enter at the residence of an upmarket restaurateur. The suspect is known to have purchased live and shucked power for his business from Operation Paid's undercover officer, and he could have made many more illegal transactions. 
Before long, the suspect's seated in the kitchen, but his apparently poor grasp of English turns a simple attempt to read him his rights into a major problem. You have the right to consult and instruct a lawyer in private without delay. Do you understand his rights? <laughs> so. This isn't going to be an easy interview, but across town, a team led by Fishery Officer Caffey is heading for another private residence to follow up on evidence gathered by the Special Duties Fishery Officer. This particular offender um, has received about 200 kgs of power just a couple of days ago, paid about $5,000 for it. The operation team know that the criminal grapevine will get busy as soon as they make the first raid, so the visits are timed to occur simultaneously at different locations around the country. Good morning, you're Richard Rock from the Moose Fisheries. We're going to start in the garage. Um, this is the direction that the 200 kgs of power that was delivered a couple of days ago um, headed to. The search can finally get underway, and the garage is the first place they put the sniffer dog through. Uh, looks like there's potentially um, power uh, meat on there, so most likely that's been used um, in some way um, with the power, so we'll um, hold on to that. Finding evidence of power that's already gone is difficult, but these harmless looking bags are a good find. Even better, there are details of what is obviously cash moving back and forth, and in the suspect's vehicle, officers find the classic little black book. You want to speak to a lawyer now? And the homeowner is about to be taken to the police station. Just a lot of different phone numbers just found up in um, the top of the vehicle here. Maybe, maybe these are the people he's selling it to, so it's all good um, intelligence and information for us. As the search continues, the power dog makes another crucial discovery. Find it. Oh, good boy, find it. I had a boy. Very good. This is exactly what we've been looking for. The plastic wrapping is one of the final links officers need to prove the connection with illegal power poaching. And we're finding um, more of our bags, um, which appear to be um, those bags that have been used by the UC. So this is awesome. This is exactly what we've been looking for. So this um, definitely links this um, offender um, to the product and uh, hopefully to other um, offenders. So this is really, really good. Hundreds of kilos of power are thought to be moving through this property. And inside the house, there's more evidence of links to the poaching ring. On the fridge, um, phone number of uh, what looks like um, one of the known associates um, um, to this offender. As the evidence mounts, outside there's more bad news for the occupants of the house. This vehicle, uh, we believe, may have been used in um, illegal activities, so we're now seizing it. We're just getting the people to take their personal belongings out of this van now. As long as the conviction uh, follows through, they'll lose the vehicle. It'll end up getting sold at the auctions. Um, otherwise, they'll get it back, but most likely they may not see it again. The buyer was convicted of illegal trading in power and was sentenced to seven months home detention and 200 hours of community work. Pursuant to section 201 of the Fisheries Act, you are required to answer my questions. But back on the other side of Auckland, the interview with the restaurateur isn't going anywhere. Uh, so, uh... But upstairs, the team are finding documentation that will help prove the case against him. Gold. Evidence like phone bills can provide critical information linking the suspects in the poaching ring. And everywhere the team looks, they find more potentially incriminating paperwork. This is hidden in the hot water cupboard. Make sure you give that to Greeny. Yeah, I'll just go and get Greeny. Um, check this out, though. You think it's a kid's book, right? It's got pictures of kids' yeah. stuff in it, and then all of a sudden it's got heaps of... ..data, cash, yep. Yeah. A large amount of cash is photographed, and the suspect's vehicles are temporarily confiscated. But worse was to come. For today at least, the restaurant will be closed for business. A search of the popular seafood restaurant turns up even more evidence, and the consequences for the owner are growing all the time. He can take the small farmed power and keep them, or be keeping the one wild stock ordinary power and seizing this tank. We've just got um, a small amount of cocktail powers, some larger power, um, which is set up from the tank, and some drive power. So 
just I'll ask him if he's got any dockets for that. We'll just have to keep, keep looking to see if we can find anything else. Another one. Where's your one? one? In there. What? Oh, it's a little cultivate one by yeah. the looks of that one. The restaurateur was convicted of buying illegal power and was sentenced to four months home detention and 250 hours of community work. And along with fish tanks and freezers, three vehicles were confiscated. In Wellington, Operation Paid is carrying on and the target of the next raid is the proprietor of an unassuming fish and chip shop who bought power from the undercover officer. We're just looking to catch up with you on some uh, activities to do with your uh, business. Oh, okay, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah. I've got a uh, authority to enter, okay? Yes. We have some concerns over some activities that have taken place with respect to the Fisheries Act. Okay, yes. Okay, so this is like similar to a police search warrant, okay? So okay. this is given an authority to enter your residence here and we're looking for evidence of some offending that we believe that's okay. taken place. It doesn't take very long for the dog to find evidence of power scent and the box has even been labelled. There's a box in here he's interested in. Okay. Good boy. The dog has also indicated the takeaway shop owner's vehicle. Half for you, half for me. And documents in a search of the business premises will prove the undercover detective's report that the takeaway shop has indeed been a backdoor receiver for illegal power suppliers. Good boy. What have you got there, buddy? Good boy. Show me. Vicky. Good boy. The officers confirm the dog's indication, although the owner is still in denial. These homemade or? No, no, we bought it from Mr. Stafford. Mr. Stafford. We, because we don't have yeah. my, those footage, so, but some people like them, that's why we get some of them. Okay. Good boy. These have been made, these residual power here, they've been used to make power fritters. These are the moulds where the power fritters have been made. You can see little bits of power still left there, which he's picking up on. Further search reveals more frozen power. Good boy. Good boy, Luke. Very nice. There's a number of boxes of legal frozen power here, but the shop owner doesn't yet realise that the source of some of her fresh power was an undercover fishery officer, and she's about to lose a whole lot more than she bargained for. Now, because of the offences that we suspect has happened, yes. your vehicle has been involved with some of those offences. My vehicle? Your vehicle, yeah. And so your vehicle is now going to be seized by us. Now, it's going to be taken away. Taken away? Yes, right now for the moment. Yep. OK. Oh, my God. Got one unhappy lady at the moment because we've just removed her vehicle from site. So, yeah, getting there. OK. Not very. No. I understand. The takeaway shop owner was charged with three counts of buying illegal power from the undercover fishery officer. She pleaded guilty and was fined $6,000, had to pay court costs, was given 350 hours of community work and her vehicle was forfeited. In Auckland, fishery officer Justin is taking yet another team to the residence of a group identified as being major players in the illegal power trade. The property is alleged to be a warehouse for the shellfish, a bank for illegal proceeds and a distribution hub. With the sheer volume of product and money passing through this house, it's essential for the fisheries team to have police backup. On the door, mate. My name's Mark, and I'm a fisheries officer. Yeah. Okay, I need to talk with you, all right? Yeah. Almost as soon as the search starts, the team locates an enormous cache of frozen shucked power in the garage. No attempt has been made to hide it. Um, highly likely there's probably going to be power, full of power. There's one in here, a piece to be full of power as well. So we'll let the exhibits officer know. As officers comb the house bedroom by bedroom, they begin to get a true understanding of the scale of the operation. There's a freezer full of power meat and a large stash of money. Next to this uh, stuffed toy was a top, and it says quite a few wads of uh, cash oh, in there. OK. Let's take a photo of it and make it situ. There's huge amounts of money involved. I mean, clearly we found a lot of money inside today, um, over $5,000. So that's just for one day. We don't know how often they've been doing this. So. Both the cash and frozen power are major fines, but even more interesting to the operation is the paperwork, which includes receipts and what appears to be notes about cash transactions. We're just looking for little scraps of paper like this. This is what we've been sort of instructed to look for, these numbers. 
Let's get to uh, be able to put them out of out of business. Back at the house once occupied by the alleged ringleader of the power poaching ring, yep. Murray's on the phone to Operation Headquarters, trying to yep. work out That's where fine. the guys got uh, to. This is so annoying. It's like getting out of home. I don't want home. The woman's annoyance is understandable. It's her ex-husband who's at fault here. But judging by the evidence around the house, he's still using the place for his illegal activities. I've, I've actually spoken to the to the wife and the lawyer and they maintain he hasn't lived here since March this year. He's actually been kicked out. There's good news and bad. The defender himself has been located at another address. But although the ringleader is still to be interviewed, he's already admitted that he uses this house for some of his illegal activities. Uh, he says that sometimes he does stay in this house. Yeah, he's close still here. Close still here. The search of the room used by the leader of the ring finally turns up the crucial piece of evidence linking the suspect to the undercover officer. Key bit of evidence here, clearly this links their offender to the uh, undercover man. Evidence collected during Operation Paid put the ringleader behind bars for three years, with a further three-year ban on fishing, along with the forfeiture of vehicles and equipment associated with the black market in power. Over the nine-month period he spent undercover, the Special Duties Fishery Officer traded 9.4 tonnes of power with a commercial value of more than $1.3 million and anything associated with the trade has been seized. The results achieved by Operation Paid made it the biggest success that fisheries had ever had in the fight against the illegal power trade. Over the three days there was a total of 63 people arrested, there were 34 vehicles seized, about $130,000 worth of vehicles. About um, half a tonne of power was recovered, um, still with the buyers in Auckland, and a fairly large amount of cash and, and, and other stuff related to the uh, illegal network. The loss of their equipment was a serious blow to the black market in power, but worse was to come when the poachers faced the courts. The 63 that were, were charged, and uh, they've all been prosecuted, taken through the courts. Varying sentences from um, community detention, uh, home detention, and a significant number of the uh, higher end uh, players in the in the network received um, lengthy terms of imprisonment um, around the three and a half year mark. After the termination of Operation Paid, there was a significant drop-off in power poaching around Wellington, but the temptation of easy money means it continues to be a problem. You still have groups out there making uh, money from poaching and selling power. These rat bags can um, make $15, $20 a kilo. You know, they can make um, eight, nine hundred dollars thousand dollars a day if they go out and dive and, and sell their product. Supplements their income quite nicely. And uh, the stocks are still under serious threat.